What's up guys? This is the Brofman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War. Let's play as the Portuguese Empire. So to pick up where we left off, we have invaded Great Britain. We have a force pushing up to siege Edinburgh. We're waiting to see if we can draw these troops eastward into our battle. And what I probably want to do, well, I don't want to build a local fishery here. But maybe I want to spend money on repairing Glasgow, uh, not Glasgow, Newcastle. Uh, but then Edinburgh is pretty well taken care of. Uh, we're at war with the Dutch, but we're not so bothered with them until we have a border. I suppose you may request a unit of Mikele. Let's start to slowly build up this army, very slowly, because we're currently sat on about 12,000. We could use that money in a hell of a lot of places. I mean, once we secure Great Britain, that's going to be fantastic. Uh, but we do want to continue our attacks in the Caribbean as well, as I would like to attack the Americas. 13 colonies specifically. It looks like we are now able, I'm going to keep you guys there for now, but we are now able to take my, well, I potentially do that next term when I've got a fresh set of, well, when my treasury is a bit more expanded to attack Port Royal. We've got a significant number of British troops there. But once we do that, I mean, hmm. I'm tempted to go straight for Boston. Straight for Boston. No messing about. I mean, we are at war with New Spain. I could finish off Mexico. Hey, actually, I'm at war with the United Provinces. Okay, so sorry. Port Royal invasion on hold. It's part of the reason why I wasn't super keen on moving against New Mexico is that my army would be isolated. So I'm going to land... I could get there quicker by landing near Antigua and driving, and driving inland, but I want to land south in the event that they have sent troops to attack Panama. So at least by going that way, we will intercept anyone. Okay, so let's change the calculus a bit. Uh, Caracas, you will likely start to build up a second army because you will need one in theatre. That's what it wanted to see. So, bringing in a force of Irish volunteers and yeomanry regiment of horse against the garrison that have now lost their mortifier. So let's do that. Um, yeah, I'd like to take Antigua, like to take... Uh, New Mexico, or take Mexico particularly because there's lots of mines and mines provide really good uh, income for your tax base. That will be quite a significant territory to get. I think Mexico might be one of the most wealthy regions on the on the map, I think. From memory, I don't, don't have the, statist the statistics to back it up. But it's a major city, so you can really ramp up your tax rate, and you've got a a lot of mines as well. So let's deploy my guns up on the hill. Now uh, my actual line infantry. So deploy. Make sure my hand is in the right place on the desk. Seamen form up there. My elites. I'm going to be holding to the left of the guns, ready to advance. Actually, I'm going to give them the skirmishes because we haven't got many skirmishes anyway. Keep my cavalry loose because we do have enemy reinforcements coming in. So you want to check where they are coming in from. Yeah. Okay. Grenadiers, fusiliers. Form a hard left flank with my skirmishes in support. So my gunners are going to pound this army here. So we are actually going to advance and be recognised. Well, advance and be recognised of sorts. Uh, where's my carabinier? Carabinier. You guys down on the flank, get a regiment of horse to back you up. Let's keep a fourth light horse here. So yeah, these are all infantry, so they're not going to be providing, they're not going to be getting to us at any great speed. Uh, let's mop up this central force before advancing too far. I mean, they're only just mainly Irish volunteers. Which look effective like a militia unit, but have been 
reskinned. They look pretty good. Well, the regiment of horse to advance into two range. Actually, you guys are probably going to have to advance. Lest they hit the left flank of my army. To be honest, actually, my elites probably want to get in here. Come on, properly. There we go. Skirmishers, hold the left. Hold on the left. Okay, now we're starting to carabina. Push up. Fire at will. Ready. My line is engaging. Cross the line. We can have fire superiority. Okay, they're getting ready. So actually, let's crank. Let's crank this line back a bit. The only positioning in front of the terrain. You did not like where I tried to place you, that's for sure. Charged by the yeomanry, but they are in the yeomanry. Let's get my carabiner in. Take them out. My infantry line's pretty solid. When these guys begin opening up against the British reinforcements that are coming, they, may, they might be more regular units, but my guys are better and have advanced firing drills. So they should be very unhappy with that state of affairs. Maybe bring my. Attack there, Sars, get down here. Okay, the first yeoman unit, uh, my carabiner are wavering, so my right flank's a bit dodgy as far as cavalry is concerned. My hussars are relocating. It appears they do not have fire by rank, so we still maintain our fire superiority advantage. And my guns engage. Engage the cavalry. Because even though we have cavalry in the fight, they have more. So we stand to gain. At least for now, until my hussars get over there. There we go. Fusiliers are going to be doing an excellent job engaging the British line. Fusiliers are very good line infantry. So you think actually 56 compared to 46 for experience 3 expat infantry. Reloading skill 54, so they reload faster and they've got a lot more ammunition, but their melee stats are just not quite very good. They're just not very good. Very well. So then this these men advance. New men plus the skirmishers cover their left. Artillery just engage somewhere in the centre. My hussars are in position and we have actually managed to knock back both the enemy cavalry units. That just goes to show that the omenry is pretty pants. Mow down the Irish volunteers. Begin to redeploy our line. You men are going to be grouped separately. And the volunteers have routed while they were trying to redeploy. Bank yourself against the rock. Run the last distance. Can I get? I can. I get skirmishes out there. Is cover the left, they're going to be looking mighty alone. Hussars, go after the yeomanry. Bring my general down here. 
Yeah. So immediately we see this is a common AI trait where they just decide, you know what? We could go after the line, but it looks like it might be too big and scary. Even going to charge the flank of my line or try and run in front of it? Let's try and run in front of it, actually, so I'm going to let you do that. You men push up, cease fire the guns. The general should be down here in a minute. Okay, right. Missiles go for the regiment of foot. All this infantry. Get over here, right up onto the flank of the enemy line. Let's let my cavalry do some work. Especially because these are the units that are currently exist outside of the fort. Actually, yeah, the volunteers are the ones that exist outside of the fortress. These fellows, including my skirmishers up top, uh, picking off units of the enemy militia. Let's run my grenadiers up. Just like that. Yeah, we've got another sound now, for some reason. Okay. Keep attacking the 21st. But yeah, these guys are kind of screwed. The Brits, that is. The Grenadiers, they're going to take a bit of a pounding. But their job is just to hold. Hold the ground. The flank should get wrapped up pretty nice. Hold you guys are here. Who's that? British Regiment of Horse. The only thing I don't want them to go after is my general. Gunners can't engage. Recombine all my cavalry together. If they go for my infantry, that's fine. They'll just drop into square. I'll combine all my cavalry together in the event that they... It looks like they are trying to go for my line, which is fine. Can't really hurt my infantry. They're all good infantry. Oh no, they're coming for my general. Kill that last Irish volunteer. Engage the enemy cavalry. Bizarre. Carabiner fire at will is off. That melee should go my way. This infantry. Push around the right flank. Okay, there we go. So now you guys push up. Cramming all of my units here so they can all share in the glory of victory. 16th Regiment being engaged by my Portuguese skirmishers. They could not stand it. The Grenadiers may be losing men, but it is glorious. You men form up to try and engage the fifth. You guys in a good position to fire down into the woods. Yeah, no, there's still exists to this to the behind the arms of the line. At least the garrison. This is the garrison we are now engaging. That's right. Warm up into your position, because there are enemies to kill in the woods. Look at that guy holding his musket ready. Oh, there's men flee in the distance. No, oh, this fellow's musket's failed. I mean, it is cool when you get all these little, these little angles you get from. Empire. Now he got his musket to fire. Sadly, though, I think it would be in vain. Trumpeter 
proudly blowing his bugle, keeping the men in line. I think it's just Norden. That unit's routed. Yep, everyone's mighty upset. I want you guys as well. Form up at the top of the woods. I think they'd say 20th will go down. Oh yeah. 33rd are engaging. Yeah, they are. They too are routing. Excellent. I mean, yeah, I was going to say that routing unit. That is another. That's a unit we haven't got yet to kill because that is their general unit. Well, their command unit because it looked like an infantry unit. But, that's a good ratio. See ya, fellas. See if you men can prevent the fall of Edinburgh. Although, I think... Ooh, uh, a good commander could probably do that. I am not a good commander. Ooh, I am not a good commander, but let's try... Ah. Still alive. But there's only two ships. It looks like they might be attempting to flee, but I believe we do have ships attempting to try and chase down their... chase down those vessels. Military alliance, and they're offering me money. No. Keep me out of your wars, Poland. I'm not interested. I am not interested in fighting in Europe. Oh, and it's the Ottoman in turn, and it looks like they're going to be slow, so. And we're back. And yeah, so this this was a classic example of uh, when people think that uh, the Ottoman Empire has caused their game to crash, uh, it, it really hasn't. Just, ah, everyone's stealing my trade spaces. Um, yeah, so it took about 10 minutes for the Ottoman in turn to pass, and yeah, sometimes you just got to sit there and just kind of scroll around on your phone. It's kind of lame, but you know. Just wait it out. Just wait it out and just leave it. I mean, genuinely, genuinely, that's why... Well, I mean, I have had some campaigns crash. For sure. Ooh, trade agreement cancelled with Prussia. I have had trade agree uh, uh, <laughs> campaigns crash, but most of the time... Oh, I've lost... Yeah, I've lost all my trade spots here. Very well. Still got some good ones here. But yeah, most of my campaign fixes, if you like, have just been from. Okay, have been uh, have been from just waiting things out. Let's just see what happens. I'm gonna send them over to the east, to the West Indies rather. So got ten thousand. Obviously, yeah, Britain's still blockading me, and they've got a big scary, uh, <laughs> big scary first rate. So I want to build some second rates. Just to, oh, I've got one heavy first rate and a third rate, and they don't they don't screw around. Um, so that's really impacting my income, but yeah, not as much as this is impacting their income. So, ooh, almost all my money to replenish that army. That's not great. New town emerges, Swansea. Oh yeah, I remember Swansea, but I haven't got any money anymore. So Nantes has got a craft workshop and Oxford has a church school. Let's start converting these Protestants and get rid of that one religious unrest. Okie dokie. And elsewhere. But yeah, this is its mostly due to the fact that it's not impossible that the Dutch have recruited armies and they're somewhere in the south. They may not even be here. But we're going to do that. And actually, I could probably stand... Well, no, you, you guys need to stay where you are. This small fleet needs to stay where they are. Started building up a force in Caracas. Let's not recruit anything. 11,000. What about our tech? One more turn till we get socket bayonet. That'll be useful. Uh, but yeah, I really want to get these... <laughs> get these second rates in. So I can try and knock out this fleet. But let's hit in turn again. And I fear we may be on for... Well, I'm definitely going to chop the Ottoman in turn out of this. Because if it's the same again, this is going to be silly. Ooh, I was hoping you wouldn't attack me. I was hoping you would just let me recover. But yeah, sit back on the defence. Again at Edinburgh. 
let my army attempt to try and recoup its losses. And then we will, before we know it, we'll take, we'll have taken the capital, we can advance over, attack Ireland, and we may even be able to force a peace out of the British anyway. But yeah, I need to keep, I want to keep pouring money into my navy, because it's something I never really do early on. And I think that's fair advice, in general, for empires, that you can, you can manage without a navy. You might not necessarily be, it might not necessarily be the best, like it might be a bit, you might, you won't necessarily do as well as if you had a proper full-on navy, but you will survive. So let's build a little redoubt here. I do mean a little redoubt. So you've got enemy reinforcements coming in. So this is going to be one defensive position. Which is backed up against terrain that the enemy cannot so easily advance at. My skirmishes are going to deploy ahead and drop down cavalry defences. Then fall back. It's enticing to try build another set of defences, but I want to keep my army together. But it is enticing to drop two sets of guns down like this, all together. And then do something like this. To provide a bit of support for these guns and it's dividing your army which is normally a really bad idea but my cavalry has regained a bit of strength so they can be a bit of a mobile reserve my general is going to take the smart position and be underneath just below the forest here on the highest ground okay i mean they've attacked me so I do not expect. You guys. Oh, you guys are out of range. Just. Let's speed up time because my guns are going to be engaging their 12 pounders. They're going after my cavalry. Here comes their reinforcements. Yeah, lots of these units are quite weak. And now my guns are. My other guns on the hill are engaged. So they're going for my cavalry, so let's redeploy my cavalry and spread them out like so. I'm not quite sure what you guys are doing. Oh, okay, it was city group tactics. Okay, well these gunners on the hill pick off Highlander Warband well actually I may keep my cavalry let's keep my Car carabiner mobile because they could go after some of the enemy guns let's put my hussars up on this flank Yeah, you do yeomanry. Not bothered about, not bothered by you guys. I mean, this concentration here, driving around our flank, is a bit of a concern. So we've downed the yeomanry soldier with our first volley. I mean, if we end up having to push these guys off the hill into the enemy flank, we will. I tried to drop my guys in square, but it, didn't, it, was, it took a bit too long. Hello. Shoot him. Shoot him off his horse. Uh, my cavalrymen are going to try and have him.
long chain of British reinforcements, to be honest. These guys up here are wasted. My guns are, are protected. Okay, you guys, plus you guys, plus you guys. Advance on the enemy flank. Oh, they don't like that. They don't like that one bit. This unit of blind infantry just lost 70 odd men. This is 30, roughly 30% 30 of their of their strength. So my guns on the hill. Should you go after the regiment of horse? Because plinking, <laughs> I was about to say, plinking off. It's either plinking or picking off. Enemy cavalry is always a good idea. Some howitzers, eh? I can't wait till I get some of those myself. Yeah, this <clears throat> this force here is going to stay where they are, just to provide a bit of protection for the guns. And you guys might actually, eh, militias aren't usually worth attacking. Skirmish cavalry on the flank, general to me. This artillery. Ooh, hello. Cavalry charge. So you guerrillas that are hidden, fire it will off. Wait till they get closer. Skirmish cavalry run, but also provide a good volley. See, do they know my? So do they know my guerrillas are here? Because they're coming right at them. Okay, now, okay, now you're not the primary target. Open up. Thirty six can hold here, he says. Oh, they're engaging my infantry with their guns. Very well. Artillery on the hill. Engage. The enemy line. They, their men are shattered. Let us advance. To be honest, we're probably going to pick up these men as well. Ooh, it does screw up my line if I do that. you new men position to provide strength for the, for the artillery the enemy general is exposing is exposing himself Guns are going to limber up because they're going to soon not be in a good position. Bissars go after General's bodyguard to see reality. Yes, there they're going. What's making all that cheering noise? And suddenly my Bissars burst over the hill. But they are moving back to their line. Let's push my cavalry up in case they make that decision mistake again. Guns are still in range of a good number of targets. They've not got to move. And these guns. Let's probably move them forward a bit. No. Mm. Their position there is not too bad. Just advance up a little bit more. So they can begin to engage this concentration of troops and not leave it all to the 10th regiment of artillery although they are landing shots smack bang into the enemy formation no wonder they've got their experience Fine, 
skirmishers advance. Okay, let's begin to advance my line to engage their line. Bodyguard, because they've exposed themselves. All this infantry start to run. Tenth begin to slam shells into the enemy force here. Where's my caravina? Them over here. Get my general over here as well to threaten their artillery that's to the rear. There we go. Start unloading on them. Caught the enemy general unawares. charge the Highlander Warband. It's not quite what I'd like to do. But let's see if we can knock out the enemy general. Okay, here comes the enemy swarm. They're coming right for us. We've killed the enemy general. Their morale is in a bad state. The carabiner don't open fire. Go after the militia. You can fire your volley. There goes the enemy general. Deploy my cavalry to back up the fight against the Highlander Warband. But yeah, ultimately, the, uh, the enemy broke in massive fashion. Skirmishers. Just try to shatter men. British routing format. New men push up to here, get ready to engage the second. There we go, the enemy are aware of the predicament they're in. My skirmishers are picking off plenty of routing British troops. Okay, pull back, because there's another unit of clansmen. Take advantage of our overwhelming firepower. Keep my line driving forward. But ultimately, the enemy cannot withstand us. I mean, yeah, my cavalry just keep attacking whoever they like, really. Garrison line would be a good kill. The guns are still firing, but they're soon to not be of any use, so cease fire, conserve your ammunition, save your gun life. Let's consider a job well done from the gunner's perspective. Maybe go for the Irish volunteers. We should probably try and be a bit smart in how we attack the enemy. Guns are the guns are very upset at what's going on. The enemy militia is still not a threat, but it still exists. That's enough of a threat to me. Keep on driving my line forward. We haven't yet fired with a lot of our infantry. Okay, now charge this clansman unit. They're all stranded. They're all spread out. These men will fall quickly. There they go. Take off that one last garrison line infantryman. He's done for. Crash forward into there routing line again try go for uh, try go for some of their actual infantry I mean, granted most of it's just garrison infantry now which is still a threat for sure but it doesn't really matter if we kill it I suppose one thing to watch out for here actually is the fact these are skirmishers 
skirmishes, no like melee troops. Melee troop bad. Top tier tactics here at the Riflemen. Melee troops bad for squishy troops. Just stay all the way out here. Rely on these units to actually provide the killing power. It looks like they're getting ready to fire their Ooh, Scottish line infantry. So you do like Scottish line infantry, they do look really good. Sadly they will die like the rest. Come on. There we go. Finally caught that. Enemy cavalry. Form square, damn it. They come, the second regiment of dragoons. Push my skirmishes out. Rotate my infantry. Just make sure the square holds. And for the most part, that's all we can really do. Just keep pivoting. You men try to take out the last of these men before all your cavalrymen get shot to pieces. Understandable your wavering, I'm asking you to pursue infantry directly in front of a unit that's ready to rock and roll. Okay, withdraw my cavalry. Opening fire on the Highlander Warband, who are armed with pistols. I, I think this is where the AI struggles with the Highlander Warband. Is that the reason why you have them is for the, the choppy things, not the little boomsticks. That's what you want them for, and that's why they'll get surprised from my infantry storming in. The Scottish, uh, okay, right. I was about to say, the Scottish line infantry routed, and suddenly no, there's just another flag in front of them. Yeah, there we go. Highlander warband. Ah, oh, they're definitely going to get you guys. My skirmishers always get into trouble because I just lose track on where exactly I want them to be and it's the units on my flanks that I'm always the most aggressive with and skirmishers work better on the flanks. They go, you, you've charged and so now drop into square. Surprise! But yeah, so skirmishers, I mean, normally you want to put them in front of your line but that never seems to work massively for me. I, like, your infantry just kills so effectively. Unless the enemy has skirmishes, why bother? And even then, just advance your infantry up into firing range and let your infantry just mow them to pieces. I think I'll blow his head off. But you did not. Cannot withstand the Portuguese line infantry. Yeah, they're good enemy dragoons again. This time they're shattered. It's this last Scottish infantry unit holding, holding us up. It's the brave colour bearer advances. Have you lost your officer? I believe you have. Oh no, there he is. With his pike. Pike with these sticky, spiky things. No, they don't want to stick around. You, you're taking a real gamble there, hanging around. <laughs> I guess the inertia on those pikes is so huge that it's just a really slow spin around.
Ah, well, either way. That's another nice ratio. Erasmus Butterfield. Sorry, Erasmus. No victory for you. Yeah, we could really do with uh, providing a bit more support. And lots of the Austrians are actually counter-attacking into the Ottoman territory, which I quite like, because Austria doesn't really become a super powerful nation in Empire Total War. So I like the fact that they are doing so. Oh, Poland has just taken back a piece of territory, so spoke too soon. Uh, but yes, when it takes over to the Ottoman turn, I will chop the recording and then bring you guys back. Although it looks like I might be doing that for the Polish turn. It looks like, looks like they are trying to slow things down. Yeah, so I'm going to chop now and bring you guys back at the end of the Ottoman end turn. So see you in a second, everyone. And we're back. Ah, but yes, yeah, so looks like Savoy is sending troops somewhere. Hopefully they don't do the usual AI thing and screw me over and invade me. But there we are. That's the AI for you. Ah, uh, but yeah. Right. Right, right, right. I've got some ships now. Or I should have some better ships to try and tangle with that very small British fleet. I know some of you guys are going, Oh, you idiot. It's so such a small fleet. Why can't you win? I am hella scared of first trades, especially when I've got loads of little ships who, who cannot stand up to it. Socket bayonet research, which is great. 11,000. Okay, so Swansea's going to get a craft workshop. Liverpool's going to get a trade port. You guys are going to get another. Oh no, you're still, you're, you're good. Just keep drawing in British troops to defend Edinburgh. That's what I want. I've got a spy here. Now this is the guy. Okay. Okay. Mm. Embark the spy. Deposit him on co in coastal... Well, on the coast of Europe. And send the spy to Berlin. I want to see what gave them cause to break off trade relations. And then, let's say, hey, Marathas. Y'all want some trade? Good. Screw you, Prussia. I can still trade with you, but I'm not going to. Oh, all right, then. There's no one else to trade with. You all suffer for this. 14,000 next turn. That's pretty good. Yeah, a couple of our port, a couple of our trade routes have been, have been blocked because of this. I mean, I know it's just it's chiefly those big ships, but it's scary. Uh, do I go naval hospital? I think I do. Yeah, I think I've got to. I mean, Steam Dry Dock are the funnest ones because you get rocket ships, which I, which I since playing against one on the other campaign, uh, I really want to try those out. Heavy frigates are okay. Carronade frigates are okay. But it's mostly the rocket ships. But yeah, for now, let's go for a naval hospital because uh, I could do with some heavier grade ships. So we upgraded our Weaver's Cottage, which is good. We spent a good amount on our on our um, uh, economy for now. But it looks like we can't really get any useful ships. Although I might recruit a galleon uh, in the, into this fleet. I'd like to slowly, well, make this one my powerful ship and go, augment the seconds with some, although to be honest, you're quite a dinky admiral. But yeah, let, let's give this a go. See how many, how many uh, small ships I lose trying to take down their heavy ships. This, <laughs> yeah, they, they put out so much firepower, so I need to use my little ships to surround and peck at their small number of powerful ships. Uh, dismaster, and then just sit out of range. That's the name of the game. Well, not sit out of range, out of their arc of fire. My admiral on a fifth rate is going to stay right at the back because I do not want my admiral exposed so deploy do I not aha group you together line astern something like that 
the Royal Navy's in the fog bank. And it looks like they're coming right for us, in which case that's fine. At the very least, their little ships will get here faster. We can at least knock them out. There's Leander the Heavy first. That is our prize. Roebuck is also valuable. To be honest, the War Galleon, I don't know, I suppose in theory they're all useful, except for the Heavy... Uh, no, the only thing I don't want is a sloop. Because I can send those, I can recruit those at any time. But the War Galleon and the Heavy Privateer, they can... I suppose they can all bolster my trade fleets. So they are all useful. Yeah, let's let them try to break through my line. If it looks like they start to break through some of the heavier ships, my more potent ships can um, rotate. It looks like they are happy just to sail straight for us. Which I'll take. Yeah. Wabash, Sloop of War, Zebra, the Heavy Privateer. We've got Aetna. Etna, the bomb catch, and Roebuck third rate, steaming straight for the line. But ultimately, I'm not that bothered if they break through my line. I've got quite a consolidated uh, battle line here. It's more about when, when, when Roebuck hits the line. I want to see what Roebuck does. Apart from that, though. Do what you like, good sirs. You can engage the heavy privateer. I want their third rate to try break up my line, and then my rest of my ships will might even break off some of these smaller ships and give them orders to form a second line. The rest of the formation needs an order to scoot ahead just to get them all straightened up again. Heavy first is being left for dead, which is good. I may attempt to try and get you guys to wrap around like so. Yeah, Wabash is wavering. She's surrendered, which is great. Then these ships. Okay, right. Santo Agostino, sail at full steam. My fourth rates can at least sail at full sail. Because the fifth rates won't have any problem won't have any problems keeping up with them. Even then, you guys may just continue sailing around. You ships may pivot. You guys, actually, these ships likely. Oh, ooh, heavy privateers on fire. Twist around shot. Let's start trying to knock the sails off of Roebuck. Have to start fighting round shot soon because she's sailing straight into you. Our bash is, is collapsing. You guys can just sail along. You're gonna have to fire a round shot, broadsided. You don't want to keep firing chain into Rover. You're going to have to fire with whatever you've got soon. Ooh, no, you don't. You want to sail straight past. You're going to engage every privateer. You're going to pivot. You're going to pour broadside. I know you guys might think, ah, oh, why do you need, why did you need uh, second rates for this? Like you've got lots of smaller ships, like that should be fine, right? Okay, yeah, it probably would have been fine, but uh, we'll click it. Hold the click, hold the click, don't let go. 
Gone. You'll get a bit of hammering because that is a significant ship of the line you're up against. The first rate's going toward my battle fleet or the rest of my battle fleet. My four, this is a fourth rate and it's in the line of fire to a third rate, so you are going to have to just sit here firing round shot. Can you ship sail on? Because you've got a fir heavy first rate to take out. Heavy privateers surrendered. You're just going to drop anchor. Your job is just to pour more shots into her sails. A war galleon. It looks like it's going to try and bodyguard Roebuck. Let's bring you guys along to engage Roebuck as well. You sail past. Ignore the war galleon. She's on fire. Okay, fire your broadside into the war galleon. Sail away. She is on fire. Make all sail. And flee. You begin firing chain. Hold your position. You also fire chain. Second rates need to make some make some speed. And all of these ships to the rear. Yeah, I know you've so you've decided you're going to come back, but you're in very bad shape. Are you ready to pour a broadside from our fourth rates deck into you? Okay, firing some chain into the sails of Leander. Fire as she bears. Oh yeah, you've got chain shot on. I forgot about that. You want to try and knock out some sails. Not overly concerned about much else than that. Let's bring this fourth rate around to a stern. Roebuck is routing. Roebuck is back. Oh, this is going to really hurt you guys if you don't. Wrong broadside. Drop anchor. Drop anchor. Fire your broadside left, otherwise that's going to wind me up. Okay, you're going to have to just broadside shots into her. Because you are going to get ripped apart. All of you ships go after the war galleon. All of you ships sail over here to get into the heavy first stern. Second rate, try and loop around. Second rate is going to have to sail into a vulnerable position. What's oh, going to hurt? Mainmast is down. That's something you wanted to see. By a round shot. If you can. If you can. Keep firing partial broadsides because that's all we can do. So all 
these ships that are sailing after the war galleon. You're going to want to fire chain. Second rate's opened up on her at range. Just keep firing partial broadsides because we have to do some damage to her. Sail ahead, don't let her get through the gap. Stern, drop anchor, keep firing your chain shot. You are also going to fire chain, so I just want to. I really like taking down masts. It's, it's really my thing. Yeah, San Sebastian is going for the sails. The mizzen's been cut in half. Fellas, just gonna sail close near the fourth rate. Unfortunately, has lost their battle. Oh, you're on fire! My other ships are attempting to chase down the war galleon, but sadly, they're all sailing at like half sail. commit some amount of fratricide you're pummeling in on the sides alright well oh, broadside ready fire will um, but to be honest you're not going to be firing at will you're going to be broadsiding it Heavy first is knackered. The war galleons. I mean, yeah, my second race ship of the line. Look, she's not doing so good. Just keep pummeling her with broadsides. But yeah, this is why I wanted second rates, is because they can at least. It's not a case of just fighting until, you know, just tritting her until she runs out of... Ah, no! You men... All of you guys sail on... But yeah, like, <laughs> a sump cow is gonna be in really bad shape in all these ships because they're given new orders all sailing it up mast fire now oh, she's wavering keep keep ahead keep the fourth rate ahead of her blocking her so now some of my other ships Drop anchor. Should be in a position to open fire. If they wish, my sinking fourth rate's in the way, but we must make allowances for that. Much must be risked. Yeah, I want to knock out her masts because that war galley is rapid. Huzzah! She has surrendered. Now everyone else sail to cut off this war galleon. Like, you don't attack. Sail ahead of her. 
One of my fourths on fire and wavering. Yeah, understandable. But just get ahead of her. Boom. Sadly, you're probably not going to be enough to... I mean, you're going to fire a round shot because you're right on her. You are going to keep firing chain. There we go, she surrendered. Hooray! Well, yeah, I know so many of you guys are thinking, what a pansy. What an absolute pansy. Never, never doubt my ability to stuff up a naval battle. War galleon, heavy first rate, third rate, bomb catch. Yeah, you know what, I'll bring you all in. So, this is going to take some time. So, let's bring my second and second ODs. Let's put the bomb catch into Sandy Bay. My heavy first rate. Well, this fleet is going to be my start of a new battle fleet. You guys, well, you need to, you need to repair as much as you can for whatever cash you've got. And uh, get ready to be pushed out to other theatres of war. As it stands, things are okay. How much has that impacted their income? 15,000. Not a huge amount because a couple of these things that are being blockaded are being blockaded. Because they're being blockaded in their own home territory. Um, so Orléans gone straight on to Cadence Marching. I'd rather you get on with... Punch card looms a good one. Puddling furnace is good. Makes artillery cheaper and it's quite quick and it provides flat bonuses. So it's always nice to get technologies that don't require you to spend money on things, personally. I like. I mean, yeah, I'm going to auto that. Even though the balance of power says it's a 50 50. Hours. Yeah, we're going to get some raiders coming south. There's the British fleet coming from Malta. I mean, they're going to... Yeah, that's going to be a problem at some point. This is why I need to keep investing in my navy. Do not let it slip. I may bring my fleet that's currently occupying uh, Lisbon's harbour, or Porto, over to... The Mediterranean in order to attack and destroy that raiding fleet. But here comes the Ottomans right on cue. So I'll see you guys in a second, everyone. And we're back. Yep, <laughs> it was another uh, <laughs> another long break. I think that was about 10 minutes, I think, actually. It took for the Ottomans to end their tens. Usually, it's not, they're not usually that bad for, for an extended period of time. So it's not a case of, oh, it's this bad now, it's only going to get worse. You will eventually hit a turn where it just doesn't happen. They go to the Barbary States. There. Uh, yeah, I'm going to need to take out that small Royal Navy fleet. Over to the east. But at least we've taken Edinburgh. Ooh, 6,000. Why has that dropped a lot? Oh, why has that dropped a lot? Oh, I wonder. I wonder. Why have I lost a lot of money? Heavy privateer, second rate war galleon. I mean, you're going to be enough. Yeah, you're probably going to be enough. I mean, I got my second rates are in fairly, are in okay, Nick, to be involved in that engagement. So let's bring these guys out. I'm going to need you, you chaps, to repair. I'm going to need you guys. We're going to, we are going to lose third rates over this. Actually, what I want to do is take Sixth Ray and Jebek send those guys out to West Africa. I'm pretty sure last time we did this there weren't any spots. No. No. And nope. Ooh, okay. Go over, go over to West Africa I suppose. At least for now. We can try and solidify our hole in one theatre. Let's not build anything yet. So you guys are going to combine 
So you guys are in. Con you guys are ready. We should have. Yeah, there's another second rate. Let's just bring them into the action. Actually, I could probably take the damaged one, the one that's slightly damaged. At least. Get them over here, replenishing. And I do need to just repair ships. It's going to suck. It's going to be expensive. Although, to be honest, the bomb catch can go to West Africa. How much is going to cost to repair? Would it be 3,300? That's not too bad. You want to go knock out that small Royal Navy fleet. Okay, let's take... That cavalry unit, four infantry, a pike, and a gun. I suppose I don't, strictly speaking, actually, you don't need to come. General, stay in command of Paris. The navy here. Drop your men off at Liverpool. I know, not my, not my militia guy. Eh, yeah, they, they brought in the um, garrison, but no, that was not the plan. The plan was to use my navy to drop men off who can deploy up towards the gap. I suppose it's probably worth trying to repair some buildings in Scotland. Actually, what's probably better to do is to keep replenishing because it's going to cost six grand to replenish that army that's going to be expensive um, but with this navy because ultimately what have they got here A naval hospital oh okay right so they can start churning out good ships which might not be bad for us because we can then pick at them and capture them one at a time so let's do this. Uh, I may start cashing in anything that's not a front rate, uh, a battleship, you know, third rate or higher, because I'm going to need, I'm going to need cash. Oh great! And the wind is completely against this, so deploy right over to one edge. Probably a bit more angle than that. Come on. Any, any angle is better than none. Okay, yeah, so the target's going to be day, die, second ship of the line. That's going to be the target. Arethusa, the war galleon, is going to be cashed in. As is diligent, the heavy privateer. It says you're firing, you're definitely way too far away. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna drop the recording and bring you guys back in a minute, so just a second. Okay, here we go. The first shots have been fired. We've sailed our ships forward. Now we're gonna hit the line. We're gonna keep on keep on sailing fired up a couple of shots got this is two two volleys from two second rates and all we've done is kill one crewman but at least we have done some damage to our hull but as is tradition the thing we're going to really want to do is knock out her masts Holes. We've knocked out two of her guns. Keep saying like that. We are closing the distance. I'm fairly sure the next volley you fire is going to be. Okay, right. So I think we're immediately off of. Right, no, you're going to want to keep peeling around because it looks like that's what she wants to do. I'm not 
she's right, changing her mind again. Canister shot, chain shot, ready. Nope, she's changing her mind again. See, when I fire, see, she's afraid of chain shot because when I switch to chain shot, she changes her uh, route. The heavy privateer is sitting way back. You're going to reload and make ready for chain shot. See, look, she's okay. Keep firing round shot. She definitely changes course once I change ammunition type, which is which is annoying because you think well, the AI shouldn't really know that kind of stuff, but whatever. Unless, is there a way to visibly tell? I don't think so. So, either way, I've got to wait till fire it wheels off. Fire it will on. Okay, lots of these light ships. Gun it past my battle line. Knocked out the very top of her main mast, which isn't what we want. Let's see, pouring shots into the, into the stern of my second rate. More chain shot. Okay, lots of my light ships need to. Some of them need to stay engaged. Keep on advancing. Keep second rate. Keep engaging the war galleon. More chain. Ball mast is gone. San Jose and Nossa Senhora de Merches, Merces is going to pour in a long range broadside round shot. More chain shot. Knock out more masts, please. Sail around this side. This fifth rate, scoot on rapidly. You sail ahead at speed. Probably firing chain. But you're in a position now. Pivot, pull fire into her stern. Everyone pull fire. The second rate. We ignore the war galleon for now. Geometry here is improving. So we will be able to get some good chain shots into her mast at full sail. Excellent. And now we now we just shoot the crap out of her. Don't worry about the ship that's sailing around. Our Arethusa may cause problems for now. Especially as it looks like you actually fired into Sao Pedro. Ship ahead, keep firing. Uh, yeah, keep firing chain because she is trying to sail. My second rate, just get ready to bombard her with round shot. Or a partial broadside because she's wavering. So you pursue our refuser. These second rates will continue to fire onto day die. You will continue to just pour pour shots in. There we go. 
that's made us surrender. You're routing. Well, technically you're routing for now. Potentia, reload chain, knock out some blasts. Side into our infuser. Oh, your guns have already fired. Oh, damn it, they've loaded and reloaded. Can you pivot and then just drop anchor? I mean, you can pour, you could pour broadside into the day, but I don't want you to, so waste your broadside on grape shot. You're going to fire a broadside of chain. Let's lower down. Because, yeah, these guys, these smaller ships are going to get cashed in. Ah, my, one of my fifth rates has surrendered. Knock some of her masts down. And we'll be off to the races. Main, that's my main focus. It's stopping from routing because that represents cash. Cash money. Some misses, some good hits. Still got some guns that are ready to fire. Four, three, pour some shots in. surrendered. Good. I mean, let's fire your broadside into clear water. We aren't taking more damage than we would need to. Trying to knock out her sails, so you're going to start firing round sharp. The second rate is going to save save her fire for the chain shot volley again directly into her mast. Your fire chain suddenly. She's wavering. One man ready to us. She's routing. If, if we've got chain shot, that can fire. Oh no, she's already surrendered. Sweet. Yeah, so we take we take a bit more damage doing this. But I think it's worth doing. I want the second rate and I want cash. So I don't just want to go in there and sink things. So I want second rate. And we've got two and a half thousand roughly in prize money. So the new ships come back. Okay, let's drop. Let's drop the second rate into si, that si, army, or that navy. Zone. Keep them replenished first. And spend a, make sure... Oh no, you are fully replenishing. And you go back to Porto. Where you put in a replenishment as well. 1,099. There we go. So we captured the second rate. And we got enough money to reinforce the rest of my battle fleet. So it's likely this fleet will be expanded in future by a few fourth rates. Um, and we know the Britain is going to do something with this fleet, which would be great, because I'd like another heavy first rate for free. We've dealt with this stuff. We've dealt with this stuff. I think the only other thing we haven't done is move you on another turn. On to Antigua. Okay, so let's... Attack Antigua, see what these guys do. Well, lay siege to them, see if we can draw this army in to save Antigua. If not, then we can probably stand up, well, we can shift these troops from 
Caracas to Panama if that becomes a problem. Um, but yeah, looking at the timer, I believe it's time to end the episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you next time for the continuing adventures of the Portuguese Empire. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>